Welcome to this video tutorial where I show you some advanced Docker techniques. I will demonstrate how you can cluster two domain data grids of Payara on Docker containers. This is the setup that I will create with the demo. So we have two domain application servers of Payara which are joined to a data grid and thus they can form a cluster and exchange data between uh, the two instances. You can manage the domain servers through the management console, but the idea is that everything is contained within the Docker image and that you just have to start up the containers. They are joining the data grid automatically and they can be used as such without any setup required. Since our test application is deployed on two locations, we need some kind of load balancing so that when the end user who is accessing our application is uh, directed to one of the two instances. So let's get started with the demo. For this demo, I'm using Docker Desktop for Mac, but any Docker edition, of course, can be used. Also, the one that you are using for your cloud provider and has support for Docker, of course. So let us try first some Docker commands to see if our Docker setup is correctly so that we can correctly connect to the server and that the client is correctly installed with Docker version. You can see at uh, the version number that you uh, that is installed that you are using a uh, command which gives you much more information is the Docker info command. There you can see all the different parameters and setup values uh, including, for instance, here the numbers of CPUs and the total memory that I have assigned to the Docker host um, in this case. So if we have a look at the setup that we are going to create in this demo, then you see that we have that uh, those two domain application servers here. So we need to create a Docker image uh, for it so that they, they can be started in a Docker container. We are going to use the same image for both instances uh, because we are going to put everything in that one image and everything works later on out of the box when you start up that container. We also need a second image for that load balancer, but we are going to use a predefined one from, from that load balancer, so we do not need to create that ourselves. So let's have a look at that Docker file that we, that we have uh, created for that uh, domain application server for Payara. We start from the official Docker image. Uh, the latest one is the 5.19.1 at this, at this moment. And we put there a command for Payara in that postboot command file. That postboot command file is, is executed when the server starts up. In this case, we configure the Hazelcast uh, component uh, because Hazelcast is responsible for that data grid feature that I told you, for exchanging data between the instances. And we configure Hazelcast that it uses the multicast for the clustering, so that when those two instances start up, they, uh, they discover each other automatically and they form automatically a cluster. We also copy the test application in that, in that image. And, and at the end, we have the, these three labels here, which are related to the load balancer. And I come back to those three lines later on when I explain how the application works. So let's now create that Docker image based from that Docker file that we just uh, explained. That can be done through that, uh, through that Docker build command. And we only need to specify here the, a certain name so that we can reference that image later on easily uh, by specifying that name. I have chosen the name uh, DAS, the domain application server, and here the tag grid because we are going to put them in a data grid. And the Docker here references to the directory where, where all the information is available, uh, including that uh, Docker file, that test, and the test application. The execution of that command, that build command is very fast because I have run it already uh, before recording this video and so Docker finds all the 
layers already locally and the image can be um, assembled very fast. So now that the Docker container is started, let us have a look at the web administration console of one of those two instances. As you saw, I have mapped the administration port uh, to of the first instance to 14848. So we open that URL and we get that um, login page for the Payara server. The username and password are defined within the public um, Payara image, so you can find them there. When the console is started up, you see on the left the menu with all the options for the configuration uh, of the server. And one of the things that you can visualize there also are the instances which are linked to the same data grid. So on this data grid instances page, you see that the discovery has worked so that we have the two instances sharing the same uh, data grid. And uh, we have the first instance, uh, the DAS one with, uh, with the first one and the 03, the second one. You see also that the test app application is um, deployed. So um, we are ready to test out our application and see how we can share data between those two instances. So now that we have the Docker images, we can start up the Docker containers based on those images. But first we are going to create a specific network within Docker. We are going to create that network because the two containers that we are going to assign it, the two Payara servers, um, have then their specific network segment and the multicast as we defined it earlier in that uh, docker image will then discover only those two instances been within that network and not some other instances which are maybe running outside that um, network also so we are going to create that network with the docker network command specify the create option and give it a name for instance here we sp I just specify app as the name of the network so that we can reference the name later on here in that docker run command. We specify a few, a few parameters, let me explain them to you. The minus D is the daemon option so that the um, container starts in the background and that we receive control again uh, on the commands prompt. We specify the port mapping from the um, web administration console. This is of course optional because we do not use that for the configuration of the server. Everything is already done uh, through that image. But if you like to have a look at uh, the web administration console, you can of course do this port mapping. With the CPUs option, I limit the number of CPUs which uh, can be used by that container and the memory is here restricted to 1.5 gigabyte. An important thing here now is that we reference that network that we have created so that the, um, in the container is attached to that newly created network and that the discovery will work fine later on. We specify also a name of that container. Uh, here I specify the DAS1, that is the first instance, so that we can reference it uh, and see it later on more easily. And the last parameter is the name of the Docker image that we have created in the previous command. So the startup is, is quite easily and fast. And we can do the same for our second instance of our server and application. Make sure that you use another port because otherwise you have a port mapping issue and clash. And we also specify, of course, another name, but the Docker image that we are using as a base is the same. So now that we have two containers running, we can have a look at those containers with the Docker PS command. 
with the Docker PS command, you get various informations uh, like the, the name that you assigned, the port mapping which is done so that you can find later on easily which port you need to use. Um, and, um, and although this command is useful, another very useful command is the docker stats command. It does not show only which commands, uh, which containers are running, but it shows you also the CPU usage and memory usage of that container. And you see here also that it respects the limit that we have set um, in our docker run command. So let us have a look at that dashboard of traffic. It was exposed through port 8080. So if we point our browser to it, we will see the, the view of the rules that um, the um, load balancer has created for our application. And as you see, it has created a certain rule based on that header, uh, the host header, when we are specifying the Payara dash node.cluster as host header, um, it will route us to that backend application. And that backend application here are the two Payara servers which are running, which are also running our test application. So now we can test it out with a curl command. We type it uh, with the, um, the curl minus h option so that we can sp specify um, so that we can specify the host header and the payara dash node dot cluster um, name and then we we define the url the actual url of the application it's also localhost port 80 so we do not need to specify the name of the application which is in our case the test app um, the node which is the name of the servlet that we exposed and then let's first have just an info about the um, the server which responds to our request in this case we get a response of the um, container with, uh, with with id e4 at the end and you see the e4 is the DAS one which has responded to our request you see also that the java max heap size of uh, 1.5 gigabyte is reflected here so it has taken correctly the memory restriction we have specified on our docker container if we run that command again uh, that curl command then you can see that now the other instance is responding the b11 so that's the second application server which now responds to our request we can go even a, st a step further and test then that um, data grid functionality so that we can share information between the two instances uh, on the first call um, the value zero is put on um, on the data grid uh, so the first payara server is putting it there if we execute it the second time we see that we received the value one so it has picked up um, that first zero initialization uh, but that is now done by the second server so if we execute it multiple times, you will see that our value increases um, each time nicely, but it is every time um, um, response uh, by another instance. So the load balancing and the clustering technique is working. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a few things about uh, the Docker commands and how you can create a cluster of two Payara domains by joining them through the data grid. If you want to try it yourself, please download then the Payara software from our download page. And um, if you're interested in some other cases of using Docker and clustering with Payara, you can have a look at the other videos um, about this topic. Have fun. Bye.